God is able to manage this universe. Even with Satan in open rebellion and this entire planet in defiance of His will. For while His will is never contested in heaven, it is constantly contested on earth. And therefore it is needful for us to pray, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We must pray that because it isn't that way. Therefore, when we pray, thy will be done. Listen, we're not resigning ourselves to something that's inevitable. Rather, we are declaring our desire and intent to surrender our will to His so that His will will be done in this earth. In other words, it's not just a sort of fatalistic resignation to whatever's going to be will be. It's a determination to say, I am going to do God's will. And I desire that it's God's will that gets done down here. And not man's will. And when someone does something that's contrary to God's will, we don't just say, oh well, God's will be done. We acknowledge that was not God's will. And we desire God then to react to it after the counsel of His will and bring from it the good He plans for all who love Him, and is set upon those who do not, they're just desserts. The fact that God could compel all creatures to obey doesn't mean that He does do that. In fact, we know He doesn't. And I'll tell you, it doesn't mean that He should. That's another message that I preach on understanding evil and how God uses it in the world and all that. I don't have time to go into it. But we're, we're just looking at what the Bible says and we're going to let that be enough for us. Amen? We're not going to close the Bible and go off into our little philosophical mind and in vain philosophy and deceits and the vanity of our own heart start separating ourselves from the Word of God and start pondering thoughts that bring us to conclusions that are contrary to the Bible. The Bible makes it very clear. God's will does not always get done. Otherwise, there'd be no need to pray, Thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. It's blasphemy to say that God wanted man to sin in Genesis 3. It's blasphemy. It's evil Mormon doctrine. It's false doctrine and false teaching. God did not want man to sin. The fact that He knew man would is not the same thing as God wanting it to happen. It is clear God did not want Cain to kill Abel. Genesis 4. God did not desire that men should become so vile and so corrupt and so violent that when He looked at them it repented Him in His heart that He had ever even made man on the earth and determined to wipe out the entire human race by a worldwide flood. That was not God's plan and desire for mankind. It was contrary to his will that Nimrod would build this tower to heaven and defy his command to spread out over all over the earth. He did not lead Abraham into Egypt in Genesis chapter 12. He did not lead Abraham to take Sarah's advice and lay with Hagar and produce Ishmael in Genesis 16. He did not lead Abraham to Gerar later on to expose his wife to the molestation of Abimelech or the possible molestation of Abimelech. If you say yes, but God delivered him from all this, that's my point. God's, it wasn't God's will for him to do that, but God worked it out to good for those who love him and to ill for those who don't. He did not lead Esau to marry heathen wives and vex his mother and father. He didn't lead Rebekah to deceive Isaac or Jacob to conspire with her in that. Nor did God lead Laban to change Jacob's wages ten times. These guys did all of that stuff because they're sinners. And because they defied and, def and, and, and refused to obey, disobeyed is the word I wanted, and they disobeyed the word of God and the will of God. Now, God responded to all of this according to the counsel of his own will. And he wrought good from all of it for those who love him and ill against all who don't. But all of these things were done contrary to the will of God. 
It wasn't God's will that the brothers of Joseph would sell their brother into slavery. Say, oh, oh, but God prophesied this would occur. No one ever said there was some limit to God's foreknowledge or that he who is in the heavens cannot see afar off. Yea, he knoweth the end from the beginning. But the testimony of Scripture is not that all things happen according to his will. The witness of Scripture is that it does not, that, uh, it does not go according to his will on earth. And when it doesn't, by his mighty power, he responds to it after the counsel of his own will, so that it comes to good for those who love him in the end, and comes to ill for those who don't. In the end. Need I continue with this? I mean, it wasn't God's will that Israel would have disobeyed God repeatedly throughout the book of Judges and then lose their liberty. And then, yes, it was God's will to send them a deliverer and that the, He would preach to them and that they would repent and be restored. But then it wasn't His will that they would thereafter go back into sin and disobey again. That's nonsense. That was not some, some, some service to a mystical, strange invisible plan of God. It was just real, it's real simple. Man disobeyed God. God said do this, they didn't. God said don't do this, they did. It's as simple as that. It wasn't God's will that Samson should lay with Delilah or that the priest, concubine, should have been raped to death by those Benjamites on the porch of the house where he was a guest or that the civil war would follow and a civil war necessary to purge the land of sin, the sin of sodomy at the cost of multiple thousands of lives, none of that was because God wanted it. I'm trying to tell you that most of the Bible is a record of man not doing what God said do. And the terrible consequences that follow. Most of the Bible. I know it wasn't God's pleasure to see those wicked killed, for the Bible says, he doesn't take pleasure in the death of the wicked. It was not God's will for Israel to have a king before the Son of God came to rule. But he let him have one. It wasn't God's will for Saul to disobey the commandment of the Lord, their first king. The commandment given to him by Samuel and to save Agag alive. It wasn't God's will that Saul should have forced himself and presume the office of priest which God had not given him. It wasn't God's will for David to lay with Bathsheba even though... God did visit them with judgment and grace. It was not God's will for Solomon to introduce idolatry into Israel or that Jeroboam should set up those golden calves to lead the ten tribes off into idolatry or for Manasseh to come and put those idols in the very house of God. None of that was God's will. Need I continue? I mean, the whole Bible is a record of story after story after story of men not doing what God said do or doing what God said don't. It was not God's will that the children of Judah should flee to Egypt after Jeremiah warned them from God not to do it. It was not God's will that Haman should have constructed a gallows for Mordecai. And although all these things were turned to good for God's people and to evil for those who do not love him. It does not testify that it was God's plan or purpose. God wrought a purpose out of it, but did not predetermine a purpose in it. You understand what I'm saying? For he doth not afflict willingly, neither grieve the children of men. So that even when God does drop judgment upon the wicked, God doesn't say, well, that's been my plan all along. No, he does not afflict willingly, nor grieve the children of men. He doesn't like it. Takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Shall we go on? Do you not see it? It was not God's will that Herod should murder every child two years old and under in Ramah. Even though God wept in his own heart through the heart of his weeping prophet, in that prophecy in Jeremiah, thus saith the Lord, a voice was heard, was heard. Isn't that interesting? A voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. God was listening and responding emotively to the weeping of those losing their children at least 600 years before it actually happened. Jeremiah 31, verse 15, It was not God's will that Jesus should be beaten with the whip or have his beard torn from his face. These things were prophesied, but that wasn't God's will. His God, God, and yet, we must hush for a moment and just contemplate this great truth. Nevertheless, it was God's will that his son would die. For us. Wow. That was his will. 
Jesus made that very clear to Peter. So church, don't think that all things happen according to His will. That is a vanity and a false notion. When we pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we pray it the way His Son prayed it. In the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus struggled and said, Take this cup from me, remove this cup from me, nevertheless Thy will be done. That's the way we pray it. Not a resignation in the sense of, oh well, your will be done. Oh well, que sera, sera. But no, Lord, I submit myself to your will. I accept your will. I humble myself under it. I become the obedient servant to the will of God. And be mindful, Paul lamented, remember, that he tried time and again to get to the Thessalonians. Because he knew they were having trouble. He knew they were getting bombarded by these false letters and pretentious teachers and false teachers. And he was very concerned. And he tried time and again to get to them. But he said this, Satan hindered us. 1 Thessalonians 2 verse number 18. He didn't say, oh well, it was just the will of God. Oh well, I guess it's not God's will. He said, no, no, the devil's at work here. Paul would say, it's no question in my mind. I need to be in Thessalonia. Yet Satan has succeeded somehow to hinder me from getting there. So or does that mean Satan's greater than God? No, but Satan's greater than you. And you can get in God's way. And through you, the Holy One can be limited. That's what it says in Psalm number 78. They limited the Holy One of Israel by their unbelief. The consequences of this success on Satan's part was dire. You can read about it in the Second Thessalonians. Paul warned that Satan could get the advantage of us if we're not careful. In 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11, we need to pray and obey, pray and obey, pray and obey. Do you understand, church? We can't just assume, oh well, God's going to get his will. God very well won't get his will. In fact, most of the Bible is a record of God not getting what he asks for. I don't want my life to be a record of God not getting what he's asked for. 